All right, just going to make a quick video going over this, what I like to call Talmudic Jewish doublespeak in regard to free speech and also historical analysis, because there is a push here in Canada to criminalize so-called Holocaust denial. Now, I can't say too much in, in regard to that subject due to the fact that, you know, I'm not really in the mood of getting censored for hate speech because people just can't stand exchange of ideas and political debate. But essentially what it comes down to is that banning so-called Holocaust denial, because what it would cover is not just outright, you know, denying it ever happened, which, you know, I don't outright deny it ever happened, but simply even analyzing or just re-examining the historical accuracy of the original story is deemed Holocaust denial and therefore they want it to be illegal, you know. And then check out this double speak in this article, uh, essentially trying to defend this, and they literally are saying that, uh, this is on the conversation it says criminalizing holocaust denial in canada will protect democracy and free speech i mean i mean i could call i mean even just calling it double speak would kind of be an understatement so somehow criminalizing historical analysis of an event that is pushed in the schools and the media and i'm not saying it never happened and i'm not saying that i deny it ever happened okay I, I can't say that even if i did i couldn't say that because youtube would just ban me altogether but somehow criminalizing that uh, criminalizing historical analysis in other words protects free speech i mean it makes no sense i came and try to i came and think of the proper way to put it. that's how absurd this whole thing is but it says here in the article that um one of the most prominent issues discussed at the recent International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance Conference in Stockholm, Sweden, was the harmful effects of Holocaust distortion and denial across society, and it is a narrative that is all too familiar in Canada. All too familiar to Canada, sorry. Canada's long history, long and very public history of people who promoted Holocaust denial and conspiracy theories continues to tarnish our collective memory. Uh, in the 1980s, Canada's most notorious denier, Ernst Zundel, I think that's how you say his name, uh, was one of the most prolific international producers of hate material. Uh, Toronto became a hub for his activity as Zundel decimated his own brand of conspiratorial anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial from his downtown home. And here's another thing to try to frame the narrative as well. They'll accuse you of being of anti-Semitism if you examine, you know, try to re-examine the historical accuracy of the original Holocaust story. That's not anti-Semitism, that's just you know, examining a historical event that is pushed in the schools and pushed in the media. You see, if we're going to be consistent with this, that would mean that essentially denying the Armenian genocide would be anti-Christian or something like that. See, we got to be consistent with the whole thing. If we're going to ban Holocaust denial, you have to be consistent and ban just genocide denial in general, which would then tarnish any kind of historical analysis. That's the problem with this whole thing. So yes, it, it does actually attack free speech. It does attack the exchange of ideas. But it says here in the article, continuing on, in Exville, Atla, a school teacher, James Kenstra, Kenstra or whatever, taught that the Holocaust was a fraud, while in Moncton, Mon whatever you say it, uh, New Brunswick, Malcolm Ross taught and produced hate literature that targeted Jews and the Holocaust. And in 2019, Joseph D. Macro, a teacher of 15 years in Timmins, Ontario, had his license plate revoked for promoting Holocaust denial and conspiracies. Canada is in the process of legislating Holocaust denial as a criminal act, a part of Bill C-19, uh, which, rece which received royal assent at the end of last month, making the criminality of Holocaust denial part of Canada's budget uh, help define it. This is necessary and has been a long time coming. Many Canadian Jewish groups have long, long advocated for this measure as one more tool to counter rising anti-Semitism. As a researcher who specializes in Holocaust and genocide education, I see the importance of criminalizing Holocaust denial as a measure to counter anti-Semitism while helping protect our democratic processes and institutions. Um, we seem to overlook the fact that censorship of speech you disagree with, because that's what it really comes down to, censorship of speech you don't like. Uh, that's actually what the Nazis did to their enemies. So we're going to fight against Nazism by using Nazi tactics. Okay. And before someone tries to accuse me of being a neo-Nazi, I've said this before, I'm Slavic. Okay, uh, Slavs were targeted by the Nazis in the millions. So uh, accusing me of being a Nazi would essentially be the same as calling a Jew or a black person a Nazi. Essentially, if you actually are, are immersed in the history. So, you know, somehow banning free speech which is what Nazis would do, is going to fight Nazism and protect free speech. Talk about doublespeak. But it seems to be a common th uh, trend of the Talmudic Jews to censor speech they don't like. You know? That's not, that's not how a free society functions. That's actually how a dictatorship like the Nazi regime would function.
So anyway, I wanted to point that out. Uh, Judaism is a false religion, plain and simple, and criticism of Judaism is not anti-Semitic, and also uh, examining the historical accuracy of the original uh, version of the Holocaust is not anti-Semitism, it's just, you know, exchange of ideas. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.